One of the challenges of photography, and particularly digital photography, is capturing the full dynamic range of the scene. Let me explain. When you're looking with your eye, say for example in this scene here, you can see these lights, you can see the details in those lights, and they're not pure white. At the same time, when we look over, say, to this building over to the left, it's not pure black. We can see detail there in the shadows. Take a look around the room. Look for the darkest point in your room that you can see with shadow. Perhaps it would be the carpet or a piece of furniture. Or perhaps a book with some leather grain on the cover. Now take a look at some highlights where you can see some details. For example, a ceiling, a stucco ceiling. You can see that detail in there. Now with the human eye, you can see this incredible dynamic range because the eye adjusts and changes for wherever you're looking. Unfortunately, the camera is not capable of capturing such a wide dynamic range. If you get to take a photograph of, say, the white ceiling, the stucco ceiling, then the areas of shadow are suddenly, they're just black. They're blocked out. Or if you change your settings on your camera and you expose for the shadows, and then you have a look at those areas of highlights, Typically, they're just blown out, and you just see this big area of white. Another example is to do an indoor shot and look at the windows, and usually outside the windows, you just have this big white block. And the reason is because the camera is not capable of capturing such a wide tonal range as you can see with the human eye, meaning capturing details in the shadows and highlights at the same time. Well, that's one of the big reasons that HDR is starting to become popular in photography. HDR stands for High Dynamic Range, meaning a more extended dynamic range than you could typically, typically take in one photograph, where we're going to be capturing areas of shadow and areas of highlight and bringing it all together into one image, like we see here, for example. This image here, we can see here's the highlights. You can see, still see the textures here inside this building. And if you look at the shadow areas, even inside these windows here, you can still see there's some detail there, or look at these wrought iron here. You can actually see the detail of the iron gates. In a typical standard dynamic range, or a low dynamic range photograph, even in 16-bit, you wouldn't be able to see all this detail. You would have to sacrifice something somewhere. Now, HDR made its debut with film and with 3D. In fact, it's still very, very popular with 3D for creating texture maps and lighting maps and environment maps. Also very popular with film. In photography, it's really starting to enjoy some popularity. One of the things in Photoshop CS3 is with the 32-bit mode, it now supports some very nice auto-aligning, which means that if you don't have the luxury of a tripod, you may still be able to use your photographs. Photoshop CS2 introduced 32-bit, a merge to HDR, where we could merge images together into one HDR image, that it wasn't as good as it is in CS3. In the course of this video, you're going to learn all the ins and outs of high dynamic range. You're going to learn different ways of extending the dynamic range without using HDR. And then we're also going to be looking at different types of HDR. We're going to merge our photos together into Photoshop. And then we're going to do tone mapping. Now you'll see an example like this image we're looking here with my parking shot. And I've used a little bit more of an extreme adjustment to this, where it actually looks more like a sketch. This is something that I enjoy. But in the course of this video, you're also going to learn how to create very natural looking photographs where people won't even be able to tell that it's been touched or anything's actually happened to it outside of the photograph. And for some people, that's their goal. They want a very natural looking photograph with a little bit more dynamic range. And other people's goal may be to create something a bit more extreme like what you're looking at here on screen. Well, you're going to learn how to do all these different things, and along the way, we're going to have a lot of fun, and you're going to learn a lot about HDR and 32-bit imaging in Photoshop.